the important on, on the deep half guard is not to stop the movement because you stop halfway, you know the guy can defend it. You know, like the name already saying, deep half guard. So you have to complete your movement. You have to make the guy stay on top of you. You be flat under him, okay? I'm not saying you know, the guy has the way to be flat. No, you have to do all that tricks with the knees. So you know, so your arm inside, the other one goes inside too, and you suck him in being flat. So deep, going deep to the guy. So this, it's very important for you. Okay, you do this drill here, you do this drill here, you hook the leg, get used to this movement. But the guy needs to be here, not smashing here. Smashing here is different, a little bit different. Okay? So the important part is, you know, the name already says deep half guard, so you have to go inside. My half guard game was uh, first, you know, I have to say that. Uh, was after I saw Gordo at the tournament, so I believe he was the creator of the half guard. And I started watching that game, and right after a few other fights came with defense, and start seeing how he was developing, and I started practicing at the academy. And, and I had to develop uh, really fast because I used to spar with like heavy guys, you know, like like Leo Dalla was too strong, and, and Gigo, Tata. Especially those two at the time they were like really heavy, you know, and, and that's how I start practicing. Some days I get there, we didn't have any like, you know, light guys. I was the only light guy over there sparring the middle of like big guys like Leo Dalla, Tata and Gigo. And that's why I feel a little bit comfortable with, you know, bigger guys in my half guard. So I start to like find a way to get inside and, and putting my knee in, you know, and, and of course, watching all the other guys playing half guard too, talk to the black belts around it, you know, trying to develop the better way. But that was pretty much how I started doing my half guard. I started training Jiu Jitsu a long time ago when uh, a friend of mine, Gordinho, his Gordo brother, uh, we stood together and he was telling me, come on man, I come train, come train, come train. And, you know, thanks to Gordinho, he introduced me to Jiu-Jitsu, and here I am today. You know, I started training Jiu-Jitsu, and all my friends were training with George, and once I went to George, and I fell in love with the thing, and I never stopped. It was really tough, though, you know, like, a long time ago, we, we didn't have many rules, you know, it, that, that's how the sport started, and, and, you know, people do a lot of stuff, you know, like different stuff, no gloves and they hit you in the balls and the referee doesn't, doesn't give you like much time and, and don't take points away, you know, few, few guys are putting hands on your fingers on your eyes and the referee just keep telling you, just keep going, keep going, fight. So things like that, it was hard, you know, it was hard, but it was a very good experience. A learning for me, you know, and I'm glad that the MMA developed and, and it became like a great sport. Napalm, you know, was, he's a friend of mine, not just my student, he's a great friend of mine. He's my black belt, you know, he trains with me since he was 12 years old. He went from white to black. And I don't know, I, I can't say much about, you know, Napalm experience in UFC. You know, I think he had great fights and, and bad fights, of course, but it's part of the game. I only think he he's, if he trains really well, and you know, he could be the best guy over there. You know, right now he, you know, he had problems like everybody else. But, you know, he still have a chance to get back to UFC and fight in whatever term he can. He's a great jiu-jitsu guy and strikes very good too. You know, I wish he could use a little bit more in Jiu-Jitsu to show everybody, you know, what Napon is about, you know. Get back to his roots, you know, and come train with me also, you know. I'm not saying I'm going to be the answer for Napon or something, but I think he should, you know, show everybody else what Jiu-Jitsu is about. 
Actually, my first, my idol, you know, like the guy that I really saw using a jiu-jitsu in MMA was Hickson. Okay, I know we have that conversation the other day, but, you know, as Hickson used to fight, it was after Hickson, I can say that, you know, I think it was Minotauro, you know. I know he gets a lot of punch on his fights, you know, but that's a guy that, you know, on his fight against Kultur, you see the guy sweeping Kultur as in a half guard, you know. And that in an MMA fight, it's not too easy. Actually, it's not easy to sweep Kultur. You know, if you watch his fight against Jacare in a ex submission tournament a long time ago, Jacare could not sweep Kultur. You know, and, and you see Minotauro doing that sweep on Kultur, you know, getting Bob set arm and a few others, you know, like Krokop and all those guys. And, and I think Minotauro was one of the guys that really impressed me with Jiu Jitsu and MMA. Right now, you know, like an ever for me, you know, especially because I had the opportunity to, I can say that I have the honor to spar with him. It's Hickson Gracie. And, you know, and, and the guy's a monster, man. You know, he's. I can tell you that because I sparred with many guys before and I sparred with him. You know, I'm a, I'm a rounded guy, you know, like I'm, I'm not just saying that sparring only with the guys at my academy. I spar with a lot of black belts around them. You know, I, I, the way he sees the game, the way he, he, he watch your mistakes, I, you know, I, I don't see it, many guys doing that, you know, and for me it's amazing, you know, that the guy is still sparring with you and he's, he knows all the positions, you know, the basic and you know, it's amazing, you know, a lot of guys say, oh, no, I can spar, yeah, go spar with him, you feel it, you know, and you, you heard already, many other good guys are saying, you know, like, yeah, I spar with Hicks, it's hard and everything, you know, I think the guy's a legend, you know, so for me, I think Hickson is the best one. Oh, it's developing really fast, you know. Uh, I think Carlos Grace is doing a great job with the World Championship over there and Pan American and all the tournaments and, and the instructors in LA, they're doing a good job too, you know. And the development of the BJJ in the US is really big right now. You know, and, and you know, everybody really likes that. You know, it's not just good for your mind and your body, it's, it's a, a nice sport, you know, and, and it's big in the US, you know. It's better you train with the gi because you, you know, that is, without the gi you sleep it too much, you know, and if you know how to skate from a good, you know, good choke and a good, like, umbar with the gi that you can just easily pull your arm out. I think you'll do good without the gi, you know, like there's many more techniques with the gi than without the gi, you know. I know it's different, you know, I like to train both, you know, I, I actually train once, twice a week, no gi, only two, you know, but you can see that, you know, it's a big difference from, for me, you know, they're saying, you know, it's much different, there's much more technique with the gi, and like I say, if you can escape from a nice number with the gi on, you know, it gets your confidence for you to skip without the gi, not just pulling your arm out, you know, like and slippery, you know, so I love the gi game, you know, you know like, what can I say more, you know, it's, it's the best.